Toy Tractor Times is here at the 2018 National Farm Toy Show. We're here with Chris Burmeister of New Ulm, Minnesota. Chris, congratulations on a second place uh, win in the large scale division. You took home the Toy Farmer Gold 4166 International Tractor Trophy, and it's well deserved. You've been competing at this show for a long time, and I'm really glad to see you. Shows I've done here at the Nationals. That's that's great, and I. I've, it's great that you got to take the gold home this time. And uh, let's talk That's about... Uh, I got it uh, in 2003. That was a third place trophy of a 70-20 short tractor that year, gold player. Good history. Second it's time a... I've had uh, second place here. First time was in 96 of a 64 scale display. Well, let's talk, uh, before we get into the this year's display, let's look at the history that you've got up here. and. Um, I, it's just really cool to brings a lot of memories back for me kind of looking back at these displays and uh, tell me about these uh, the photos here this was me in December of 1988 at a Fairmont Minnesota farm toy show I was 15 years old at the time just a basic display mostly uh, paper cut buildings and stuff just around the house and that's what it started out to be and so then we've got another photo here. That was in 1992 at Fairmont, and we were only allowed to have a 32 by 32 inch 64 scale display. And if you had anything to larger scales, it had to be the same size. It was just what the show manager came up with that year. I uh, see a trophy back there. Yeah, I got first place. Very good. And then uh, looks like you're this with your was collection. In, uh, 2003, that was an article that was in the Land Magazine in Mankato, Minnesota. And uh, another picture here? That was a model of a curtain barn I built for Bob Christensen at Christensen Farms in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. Okay. That was in uh, February of 1994. Well, this is a lot of pioneering stuff because, I mean, back then there wasn't 3D printing, there wasn't all these, Everything you gotta work scratch. hard to get something. I bought a lot of hobby supplies at a uh, hobby store in Fairmont, Minnesota that no longer exists and a Don Hobby store that was in Mankato that no longer exists. So we've got another display here, getting a little more advanced in detail. That was uh, uh, about an 8x8 eight eight foot display and that was in 64 scale and it was a, a beef cattle uh, layout. And that was the grain leg was scratch built and all the buildings on it and the machinery is customized. That was in uh, April of 96. Wow. Yeah, that was, and then that the, was a standout that display. Year, <laughs> I did the uh, national show for the first time and only one quarter of the buildings and a partial of the field we were only allowed a 4x6 display okay. in 96 here at the show. And this is your, uh, your parents? That was my Baker. parents, uh, Lee and Janet Burmeister, they passed away. And then we've got another layout here. And that was the same one, just a different okay. view. And the picture of the combines on the display in the background was another person's uh, okay. John Deere combine collection in the background. Yeah, displays back you know into the 90s were more about a collection than a layout. So you were one of the early people doing these layouts. and. Now this one I remember well because this is the 2001 National Farm Toy Show. You had this Moline's and picture of this one was taken in April the same year. That okay. was at Mason City. Nice. And I, I was it was my first time at the show. It was in 01, and I was a judge that year. And I remember your enthusiasm and attention to detail with these. And uh, crib got donated to the uh, toy museum here at Dyersville, and so far I I think they got it in storage. I haven't seen it on display at the museum the past year. Okay. Uh, 2009 is when I gave it to a farm couple that I stay with here at Dyersville, mm -hmm. and then they ended up, didn't have the room for it, so we went to the toy museum. Well, let's talk about this year's display. Uh, I think it really stands out. I, I kind of like your weathered silo with the vines on it. and uh, That definitely. was a 30 second scale silo. It came out of a, a barn kit. The barn was only about six to eight inches deep, and it was uh, the silo 
was that the kit was only $13.99 and I wanted the silo out of it and I spray painted it and used frog tape and uh, painted it so the chute was uh, opposite color and then I kind of galvanized spray painted it in some silver and I took one of my trees apart and made it so it looked like the IVs were running up the sides of the silo. That's neat. That's a good deal for it. I'd pay $13.99 for something that big. <laughs> And no silos are interchangeable, unlike a standee, so I could end up getting other ones and making them taller. Wow, that's awesome. And it was a lot cheaper and easier than making it out of PVC pipe. The bends were, the one bend, the rusted bend, was cut a couple inches smaller than the other one. Those were the early bends, and they were repainted. Okay. It like they were completely weathered. Now I see uh, here you've got a book showing the octagon barn and then over here it looks like you're working on building an octagon barn on the display. Yes, it's slowly kind of in progress and what it has is the roof sections will be able to come off and one, one side will have the milk room in it and the other side will be a tool room. Okay. And then I'm going to do some changes to the, uh, to the inside and it's going to have the cow stanchions on one on in the center, one side will have the horse stalls and the other side will have the calving pens in there. Nice, I like the stone walls and then uh, I guess I'll let you put this back. And then the there. outside of it will have the stone walls in it too. Okay. And then it used a pencil to show like all the planks, which looks really effective. Sometimes I've used a Dremel and done uh, scribe uh, okay. marks and do them and this time I just did it with a pencil. And then we got the Bales yep, go right down there in the center. Uh, one of the things I like is I've, I'm a J.I. Case fan and I, I like seeing that Case 4890 out there in the field. We had a neighbor had a real one. Uh, back in the early 80s, I've seen that one in the field. The 8640 John Deere's I've had a neighbor that owned uh, my grandparents' land, owned a couple of them. Very cool, and I like your trees. The trees Very are skilled. made out of pillow, inside pillow stuffings, and they're just wrapped around twigs, spray painted with a hunter green paint, and then I use the model uh, hobby grass and the uh, shaker bottles. They're about ten ninety nine a bottle, and then about uh, three dollars and twenty nine cents worth of paint. And I buy them at uh, Fleet Farm stores, and then I just spray paint them, and then sprinkle the grass on top of them. And then just let them dry overnight, and it only costs about eighteen dollars to make a dozen trees. Nice. Well, um, let's talk about the farm shop over here. We've got a New Holland uh, TR combine in there, and the uh, shed is uh, based off of this ad. It was from a nineteen seventy-two Morton Buildings ad. Okay. And that was taken around the time a farm fest was up in Vernon Center, Minnesota, one of the originals. And the, and the measurements of the building are of the same, except for the side door is on the opposite side from this display. I'll tell you what, for $6,100, I bet anybody would like to put one of those buildings up today. <laughs> That's Especially now when they make those uh, rafters with the steel supports, and now they're 150 feet wide versus the length. And these sheds were built with this style of a rafter because they had a raised cord in the center because the, the side walls were only 14 feet high and then the uh, door measurements were all uh, in there and the rafters were all scratch built. Uh, I got a 10 inch table saw I just bought in September and I can run the 3 and 4 inch wide uh, basswood to it and I can cut them as many piece, pieces as I need and I can get them for $5 cheaper versus buying them pre-cut. And then I just need to get a little more of a scribe sighting through Micromark and then I can uh, make the doors and then I'm just going to put a little bit of the tin around the, the edges of it and it'll be spray painted white and I'm going to add some uh, benches in there to look like a shop tool sitting around and back then they didn't have the floors in those sheds were not completely cemented. That looks good and I wanted to like the Massey Ferguson combine over here, a 760. I just picked that up for $28 from a vendor out here in the uh, parking lot area in the tents. Looks and good. I had been looking to get a hold of one for a while and I couldn't find one. And then I added the H Farm Wall. I picked that up here at the show. 
Well, I like the Massey, and then you got the TR-85, I think, in here, mm -hmm. which is, uh, they're both Britain's combines from the 1980s, but this great the classic new machines. The Holland one was dated on the bottom, 1988, and the uh, Massey uh, 760 was made in 1978. Back then, they didn't have the corn heads for the combines until the one they built here, the New Holland's in 88. You got the corn head in there. Now, I also got a corn crib, which that used to be a common sight uh, in a lot of places. And it's a eight foot wide, and with 20 foot height in the walls, and it's uh, 60 feet long. It would hold about 4,000 bushel of ear corn in real life. And it's all scratch built, and it's uh, weather stained inside and out. And it's got uh, dyed rice, a 10 pound bag of dyed rice. Wow. I don't have it completely full. It's to have the effect that you're grinding your corn out of the center of it. Looks like the chickens are getting a little bit of a tooth. And then it allows the uh, ear corn on the inside of the crib to dry out a little more over time versus all the moisture when they ear pick in those times. Well, Chris, I, I appreciate the tour. That's uh, Congratulations on the win, and uh, I know you're going to be coming back probably, so I look forward to seeing what you come up the next. Sure. Got to remember the uh, the older machinery, so I took a IH disc and I went and weathered it, and I made it into a Minneapolis green weathered color. Nice and so a little extra weight from some stones. Middle. Sure, that's what I like is you know always stuff hiding, extra details to find, and uh, very cool. Chris, thank you very much for showing this, and uh, again, I, I can't wait to see what you're going to make next out here. My plans are one of these times I'm going to be building a 1-8 scale corn crib. Wow. It's going to be 45 inches long by 45 inches tall to 4 feet by about 28 inches wide. Well, I can't wait to see that. That'll be huge. That'll be just a 4 by 8 foot display to put that building on. Well, we'll look forward to seeing it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Take care.